是否擅自加入大？你胡说！哎，他才是人民。陆夏，我选择站在人民。好。宇宙大爆炸理论。以前有什么？没错。有上帝。打倒反动神兽，全盘灭绝，有理，公平无罪。Karachi. Anything, boss. Yes, sir. I keep told us it doesn't matter how beautiful your theory is. All of the physics of the past six. Oh, Saul, you mustn't. How old are you? Thirty-one. I don't think that's an argument for God. Bars can't be far behind. Hmm, like we're not not singers. <laughs> I started a company. I'm a theoretical physics group at Imperial College. Yeah, yeah, all right, that's me. About a month ago, all the major. Oh, shuffles in. And every accelerator. Okay, so it's a hardware issue. How about you. <sighs> These exp. It's probably high as fuck. See what? Excited to see Jim. It's because Vera's killed herself. I won. I tell you what, I won. The opening sequence of the recently released series on Netflix, Free Body Problem, which is based on the trilogy of recollection of Earth's history written by Chinese author Lu Cixin, is anything but science fiction. Here we are in Beijing in 1966, during the height of the Cultural Revolution, when Red Guards loyal to Mao Zedong dragged professors they considered rivals of the class onto the stage, where they were publicly degraded and tormented during sessions of mass conflict. One of the victims is introduced to us by the show quite quickly, Yi Zhutai, an academic at Tsinghua University who teaches physics and is cruelly punished for his ostensibly counter-revolutionary views, such as Big Bang Theory lectures. Even his wife has turned against him, forced to confront him publicly, she is forced to appease the escorting Red Guards. The narrative opens with Yi Wenji, Xin Seng, the professor's daughter, seeing her father's brutal killing from the crowd but unable to take action. One year later, she's in Inner Mongolia clearing forests as a member of the construction corps. She briefly becomes involved in a romantic relationship with reporter Bai Mulan, which puts her into problems when she is discovered to be using his gift, the well-known environmentalist book Silent Spring. Wen Ji is taken to jail after refusing to reveal where she obtained it. There, a lady coerces her into signing a statement claiming to have witnessed her father interacting with other opponents of revolution. Wen Ji has the option to cooperate and finish the course in order to get out of this and go back to work, but she refuses, even in the threat of legal action. But this is somewhat of her fortunate day, at Red Coast Base, which is home to the enormous, enigmatic satellite dish at the summit of the mountain next to the logging camp, the military wants to exploit her scientific expertise. Wen Ji has heard tales of the effects the base has on both the humans who work there and the animals. However, she agrees right now to spend her entire life conducting high security research and to never leave that summit. But how does all of this relate to London in 2024, the setting for the majority of the series? At first, it's unclear, and the episode's conclusion implies there's still a lot of unanswered questions regarding the prior time frame. 
For starters, when Ji will ultimately depart the base, as we find out later. But the secret to appreciating this odd, ambitious play is to work through those questions. One of our audience substitutes in the present is Clarence Shi, Benedict Wong, a detective looking into a spate of horrific suicides involving intelligent, frequently award-winning scientists. After being let go by many police departments and counterintelligence organizations, Clarence might be able to make amends if he succeeds in this mission for his tough employer, Thomas Wade, Liam Cunningham, aka Davos Seawith in Game of Thrones, at the Strategic Intelligence Agency. A group of scientists Clarence refers to as the Oxford Five make up the third cluster of characters in this three-pronged drama, or this three-body dilemma, if you will, boo tomato. Since learning under Vera Yi, most of them have gone their own ways, but others have remained close, such as best friends Jin Cheng, Jess Hong and Orgy Salazar, Isa Gonzale. As Orgy transitioned to the applied sciences and founded a nanotechnology business, Jin pursued a career in astrophysics, examining studies conducted at particle accelerators worldwide. Next to Will Downing, Alex Sharp, a teacher who has never acknowledged his long-standing affections for Jin, Saul Durand, Giovanna Depo, who worked as Vera's lab assistant, and Jack Rooney, John Bradley, better known as Samuel Tarly from Game of Thrones, who left the industry completely and made wealthy from potato chip sales. The five reunite at Vera's burial after she becomes the latest scientist to take her own life. They make the following conjectures on the possibility that their former mentor's sadness was directly caused by the current physics crisis. The main particle accelerators were shut down a month ago after they began producing absurd, illogical findings that defied science. Saul is especially impacted because he was already concerned about his unrealized scientific potential. Although I'm not especially fond of any of the Oxford Five as characters just yet, the plot has a strong basis, and I do like the casual banter and sense of familiarity among the old pals. As of now, Jin and Orgy are the main characters, they each have a fascinating backstory, and Hong stands out among the rest of the ensemble in this role. Jin discovers more about Vera's current mental state when she goes to see her mother, Yi Wenji, Rosalind Chow. The revelation of our link to the past instantly heightens the interest in everything. Wenji reveals that Vera had been playing a specific video game a lot prior to her passing. She allowed Jin to use a gleaming new helmet to access the game. She finds a really lifelike VR game when she gives it a try, but she doesn't play it for very long. Before she can take in her surroundings, she finds herself walking on a decomposing body with open eyes and the land surrounding her being scorched by a massive sun. Naturally startled, Jin takes the helmet off in a hurry. Once more, it's completely unknown how this video game may be related to anything else at this time. Furthermore, Orbi's storyline's events are much less understandable. She first notices flashing lights in her field of vision whenever she turns her head while out one night with Jin. Like many of the scientists who ultimately turned to suicide, she envisions a fiery countdown as the lights focus into precise forms. The neurologist is of little use, and the statistics just never stop, frustrating in their endlessness. That countdown motif has a lovely horror quality to it because of the effects, the eerie music, and the suspense around what will happen when the time runs out. This is based on the same idea as the 108-minute timer from The Hatch in Lost, which I remember vividly from 2005. It isn't until Orby meets a spooky young woman in an alleyway, who begins with religious cliches like, the Lord has a better way, that he finds a potential remedy. She informs her that if she closes her lab, the countdown would end. She'll even demonstrate her strength, Orby only needs to glance up at midnight tomorrow to see the universe giving her a wink. So the following night, Orgy invites Saul to accompany her, and sure enough, something happens, the star's brightness fluctuates, as though they were managed by a single dial, and the whole night sky blinks. Saul interprets the flashes and decodes the message in Morse code using the antique serial box decoder that Orgy got from the woman. Unsettlingly, Orgy is witnessing the same countdown that she goes through every day unfold on a cosmic scale for everyone to watch. Wade thinks, that's our enemy, Clarence. Yes, this is an extraterrestrial show, in case it wasn't obvious before. Additionally, there's a corresponding revelation in the flashback plot when Wenji receives a briefing on the real purpose of the Red Coast project on Yang Wining's advice as chief engineer. The purpose of the initiative is to communicate with whomever is out there, not to develop weapons. By the end of this pilot, the stakes are still not quite clear. Although we are beginning to understand these characters and the issues they are facing, 
The show hasn't yet found a strong sense of direction yet since the mystery around them is still so vague and undefined. But if you can get beyond the scientific jargon and embrace the surreal sci-fi horror with a peculiar historical perspective, there's much to like here. I won't mind if this program ends up favoring existential delights over violent action.